Hey, everybody. We are still in Proverbs chapter 12 today, looking at verse 11. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. He who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. This is one of those classic hard work verses. It's a major theme in the book of Proverbs, urging us, especially here, not to be frivolous, but to be diligent and to work hard. Now, in recent years, and I guess really not so recent years, this has always kind of been true, there's been a tendency to uh, criticize the idea that hard work equals success. And there's been people that want to point to oppression in various places or the, the role that chance and relationships play. You know, the Bible does that too. The Bible it brings that out. Proverbs will bring that out as we go through it. There's that famous statement that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. The Bible is aware of that. But you got to be clear what Proverbs is there for. This wisdom literature that the Bible gives us, especially in Proverbs, is there to give us the way things usually go or to give us the best way to live in a world that is corrupt and sinful and everything else. And according to this verse, it's telling us the best thing you can do is to work hard. If you want to have plenty, you can work hard. And we've heard these stories. How many countless stories have we heard of rags to riches where somebody started out with nothing, they were oppressed, they were persecuted, they had disability, whatever, and then they rise above that and they work really hard, harder than we'd really want to, even those that are start out with talent and start out with uh, a little bit of advantage in life. If they don't put in the work, it's not going to happen. So it's good for us to value that characteristic and to cultivate it in our own lives. This verse, by the way, note, is not about becoming a billionaire, right? It's not about how to become super rich and powerful and president and rule the world. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about having plenty, just having plenty, not just barely scraping by, but having plenty. And I think most of us probably are used to that. We're not used to uh, having so much we don't know what to do with it, but just having plenty. And maybe you've been in a state, I know I sure have, where you've been in a place where it's not really plenty, but it's barely enough. Well, Solomon is giving us the answer of how to have plenty, which is to work your own land and not to go after worthless or, or frivolous pursuits. And this is all that he's trying to communicate. He's not saying, if you work hard, you will become a billionaire. Some folks think that. He's saying, if you work hard, you'll do just fine. And I think we all can agree with that. It's just common sense. Because work is what God put us on this world to do. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Before sin, before anything, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Work predates the fall. And I would even say that work is probably going to come after the fall. After the Lord has redeemed everything and we're in the new heavens and the new earth, there's going to be stuff to do. And this is what we're supposed to do as people. But many of us will complain that, well, I work hard. I work harder than you. I work harder than him or her. And I still don't have enough. I still don't have plenty. I'm always barely scraping by. Well, that's where the second half of this verse comes in. And this is important and it might be a tough thing to hear, especially if you work hard. We have a tendency as people to work hard, get our money, get whatever we earn through our work, and spend it on stupid stuff. You know, we go out every day and get a $7 coffee, maybe even twice a day. Here's a guy thing that guys do a lot. We buy a rickety old car that barely works, but then we go out and get a brand new speaker system and put that in the trunk, and all the money's gone into that, but it's not gone into actually keeping the ride going. Or we're broke and we're barely scraping by paycheck to paycheck and we go on a lavish vacation or we buy a new iPhone or whatever it is. These are worthless pursuits. These are things that drain away money. They drain away energy. They drain away time and they don't add anything to us. They're, they're just things that we consume. It's called consumption because you consume it and it's gone. It's not adding worth, as Solomon would put it here. It's, it just keeps us spinning our wheels. And if this is where you're stuck, it'll make you miserable at work. Because maybe you do show up and you're hauling junk like I used to do. You're putting furniture in the back of trucks all day and walking around in the landfill. And you come home and you've spent all your money on, on you know drinks and toys and vacations. And you're wondering where it all is. And you're like, I work hard all day. And now you start to resent labor. And you start to look at those that have more than you and hate them and, and start to blame other people for what's going on with you. If we're working hard, but we're not investing in worthwhile pursuits, then we're, we're gonna end up in the same spot. You've gotta be willing to look at yourself and not just say, well, I'm miserable, therefore people should feel sorry for me. You need gotta take control. The Lord has given you that self-control by his Holy Spirit to take command of your own life and do what's right. For, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 12, Paul told the people there, 
Such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. The Bible says get out there and earn what is yours. And perhaps this could apply to some of us who are in dead-end positions. Maybe like, look, I'm not wasting all my money. I've got a budget. I look at it every month. I go out and I work hard every day, and it's just not working for me. Then maybe your job itself has become a worthless pursuit. That doesn't mean quit and don't do anything. That means start evaluating, okay, what would be worthwhile? And you evaluate your own aptitudes, and you evaluate where the market is, and you evaluate opportunities, and what would excite you, you know? And you start finding something that's more worthwhile. And that takes a lot of hard work. Switching jobs, especially if you're gonna do something as an entrepreneur, starting something on your own, that's tough. And it takes a whole lot of work. And it's usually, as Solomon says, the people who work the hardest, they're gonna come out ahead. So don't feel like you are entitled to a certain amount of stuff and start wasting all your money on these worthless things. Earn your living, and then when you have worked to the place where you can have some discretionary income, then maybe you can invest in a few of those things. Not really invest, you know what I mean? You can spend on some of those things. So I hope that's exciting for you. I hope that gives you a little reminder, maybe around Christmas time, you gotta take a look at the budget and say, are there some worthless things going on here? Whatever it is, I hope that God blesses you, and I hope you work hard today. See you later.